Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I love this guest. I love our conversations. I love laughing with her. I love crying with her. I bet you already know who it is if you have listened to other episodes of Beating Cancer Daily Missy Hall is here. Comedian Missy Hall is with us today. Hi, Missy. Hello. Hello, Saren. And hello, people who are listening. I'm so honored to be back. (laughs) I have to tell you something. The last time we spoke, you were so congested and you sounded so wiped out that we didn't do the recording. And I'm so glad to hear that you are feeling better. I am. That that illness hit me so hard. I it I can't remember the last time. Like I lost my voice. I lost like any volume in my voice. I couldn't breathe. It was, everything just felt like I had been hit by a bus. I thought you had COVID and I actually asked if you had tested, but you actually had post-cancer, post-radiation immune system collapse. Like that's real. That is real. I, I was, it actually, it scared me and it scared my husband because when I took the COVID test, and it was negative. I and I but and I didn't have a fever and nobody else around me was getting sick. Like I'd been with my daughter and my grandbaby and I was frantic. I'm like, oh my gosh, is the baby okay? And they're like, We're all fine, mom. Everybody's fine. And when I spoke to my doctor, it's like, yeah, you're less than a month out of radiation. Your immune system is shot right now. And it felt so real all over again. I, I acknowledge that so much. I slept for two weeks. And I <laughs> when I hit that post-radiation time, I remember literally getting in bed and two weeks later waking up. I was so exhausted. It was as if someone had just pulled the plug out of me. And everybody warns you about it. I, I don't know if anyone else is going through this stage right now or about to go through the stage. I napped every day after radiation and I had so much energy during radiation, but a couple weeks after, man, I just needed to chill out and let all that adrenaline that I had been calling upon to get me through the first year of cancer treatment. I just needed to turn that off and just relax. And that's what happened to me. So when you sounded like (laughs) you were so exhausted and so stuffy, I was like, you know what, Missy, we are not even going to try to record this podcast. I am so happy you're feeling better. Just for the people who are new, if you just joined Beating Cancer Daily, every episode is really different. They're usually short, but I do have a few special guests like comedian Missy Hall, and we've been going through her cancer journey together right from the beginning. So Missy, just for somebody that hasn't been listening, just like a super quick recap about where you are in your cancer journey. Sure. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I Well, I had the scary mammogram results on January 26th. And then I had a biopsy on February 2nd and found out that I had cancer on February 6th of this year. And I finished radiation a little bit less than a month ago Mm -hmm. and have just, I've also begun the estrogen 
inhibitor that are that I will be taking for the next five to ten years. So that is where I am. So what? Gosh, is that this is August? That those of you that are going through this time gets so strange. So literally, life turned upside down in January. And now we're suddenly at August. I don't know what the rest of the world has been doing. (laughs) I'm 24 years out, Missy, 24 years out uh, since I was diagnosed, 30 years since I'm misdiagnosed, and 21 years since I am considered cancer-free after a stage four cancer diagnosis. And time is still weird for me. I don't know if it's chemo brain or what, but it still is weird for me. Oh boy. I, <laughs> that's scary. I get, <laughs> I got to tell you every time you talk about how many years out you are. And when I talk about cancer in jokes on stage and I see somebody from the audience will come up and give me a little pat and goes, I'm 10 years out. I'm 16 years out. I'm 20 years out. And it's just, it, it's so reassuring And I can't wait to be that person for other people. Like now I'm like, I'm two weeks out. Like that's not impressive. (laughs) I think it's all impressive. But just in terms of what you said, for the people who haven't been listening, yes, this crazy maniac friend of mine got back on stage in the middle of her cancer treatment to headline as a comedian because she is so amazing and crazy at the same time. But what happened? You were so stuffy. Did you have to cancel any shows? And have you been back on since you just got walloped with this fatigue? Do you want to hear the weirdest thing? And you, you and I have talked about, you know, faith and the divine working in our favor. This past weekend, which is when I was so sick, was the one weekend that I did not have any shows booked. Whoa, you are kidding me. I'm not kidding. To the point where I had said to my husband before I started feeling sick, I was like, oh, I'm kind of bummed. I don't have any work this weekend. And then earlier in the week, I started getting sicker and sicker. And honestly, I was like, I don't I don't think I could have done it. You know, like I could, and I was like, okay, okay. There's somebody who knows more about what's happening (laughs) than I do. So I miraculously did not have to cancel a single thing. Are you talking about the booker in the sky? Yeah, the the big (laughs) booker in the sky. He's my favorite booker in the sky. Capital B booker in the sky. Yes, the capital B (laughs) booker. Yeah, he's booked all my comedy and apparently booked some blessings along the way too, right? (laughs) Yes, the big booker in the sky had me covered. (laughs) Yeah. So after you have a bout with a cold or flu, I mean, this happens to all of us, whether you've had cancer or not. How hard is it to get back on stage when you are suffering from a cold? Like, do you do it? Do you wait till you recover? Do you go up stuffy and take some antihistamine? How do you handle that? I usually, adrenaline does a lot. And because there's been a lot of times, as long as I don't have something that's going to compromise other people, you know what I mean? Like, but if it's my own thing, like a, a migraine or a stomach ache, or I sometimes I get laryngitis, this was all pre cancer. There's something about being on stage, the adrenaline makes everything work. And then you get off stage and collapse about an hour later. I I know exactly what you're talking about. I had a show that I had to host and I had 105 fever. I get super crazy high fevers. And literally it just goes away. And I was trying to tell him that I had this fever and they were like, well, you're not going to touch anybody. You're just going to be on stage and you're going to be introducing. And I went to the theater with this raging fever. I did the thing and then I left. And there is something about that adrenaline. I'm not recommending that to anyone, honestly. Don't don't try this at home, people. (laughs) But I have seen so many comedians in the green room so ill 
And then the minute they get on stage, it's like nothing's wrong. And then the minute they get off stage, they collapse. Right. Right. The week before I had had two shows and I was tired and that I thought that's where I hit the pinnacle of the post radiation tired. I thought I was just extremely fatigued and normally I'm a pretty upbeat person and I was just sitting in the green, the green room and everybody was very like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, I promise I will be able to turn it on when I go up there. I just don't have anything right now because I could tell, I could tell the club owner was like getting nervous. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 it'll be fine. And sure enough, it is, you know, there's a, there's a magic thing that happens. I really um, want you to take good care of this week because this is when you're at your wick, you know, the wick has just come down on that candle And this is a critical time for you to really recharge, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. You have been through a tsunami of cancer treatment. I know you are so brave and you got right back on that stage and you crushed every show, but I just feel like your body is telling you, Missy, it's okay. I need you to really process what you've been through. And I really need you to be good, really be good to us. Like take care of every part, get a manicure, get a pedicure, get a massage. And even if finances might be an issue, I don't know, have a family member give them to you. If, you know, money is not something you want to be spending on those pampering things right now because you did have to take off work to go through all this treatment. But really think about how to restore you. Yeah. And that's the most beautiful thing. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little choked up because I found that I was, I've been so busy plowing through and being a trooper and making sure that my people weren't too worried. Mm-hmm. And my husband is out of town this week and I was by myself and I was looking through my date book. I keep a pencil calendar and one on my phone and I looked and they didn't match up and I started crying. And I just, I couldn't stop crying. And then a gig that I was excited about fell through and I was bereft. I was crestfallen. And I literally sat on the couch just weeping. And it it was a lot. And I my husband FaceTimed me and he's like, Wait, what's wrong? He thought something was wrong. And I was like, I I'm not sure. It's just like the dam broke. And I feel I when you were going through it, did you ever go like I said you do these super things. And then sometimes you just feel like a scared little girl. This is all so normal. I want to jump through the zoom and just hug you right now. This is where you need someone to come over that isn't that attached to you, like not your kid, but somebody that is a good friend, but not that close. And you need to sit on the bed and just sob. I just had to get this out these treatments knock you out. It is so scary to hear you have cancer and then you have to kick into overdrive and then you have to make sure no one around you is freaking out that you're going to die actually, or that you're going to be super sick. And so you're caring for everyone and then you got pets to care for. And then you got to make sure everybody, you know, is coordinated on what your treatments are and post what's happening about your treatments so that people have an update. It, it's like a full-time job having cancer when you have to go through it. And I don't think we all honor how unbelievably depleting and exhausting it, it is because we're all just trying to be that like perfect warrior cancer patient. So I feel everything, I have experienced everything that you're talking about And the only way that you get through it is to really honor those emotions, let them come out 
And that's why I did the episode on pity party. Just Mm -hmm. really sit there and let go and process all that you've been through. And I, I say you do it every day. You just take a little bit of time every morning and you really just go, what the heck did I just go through? And you sob. And then it just inch by inch, day by day, releases some of the fatigue, some of the frustration, some of the fear, some of the anxiety. But when you said you were home alone, that house can feel very, very empty after a cancer treatment when you're starting to process what just happened to you. Yeah, it it's very, it's very strange. I've part of me was happy about how quiet it would be <laughs> this week. And for the most part, it has been, but I'm just walking around trying to eat the right things and trying to exercise and just starting to feel better from that horrible thing. And it, then I was like, you know what? I haven't tackled like my website. I haven't tackled my calendar. And I sat down and I was like, what? And all of it, I just started crying. I'm like, how do I have something on October 7th here and not here? Like it just, it sent me over the edge. And then And I don't feel like I look good and like my nothing, (laughs) nothing is right. You know, everything, my, even my skin feels different. Like everything, I just, it's just a yucky part of this. That's the word I was going to use. And I'm sure anybody listening that is on the cancer journey or has been through this yuck, that's a perfect word to describe. You just feel yucky after this. I mean, look, there's parts of it where you feel elated because you got through it, but everything that you're saying is so normal. And you just have to realize that you may want support. You Mm -hmm. may want to get a social worker or a therapist just to start working through some of this trauma I know there's a little bit of a jeopardy going into a support group because you are a comedian. Mm -hmm. And so people are going to expect you to hold court and entertain a bit. Maybe you should tell them you're an accountant. (laughs) Oh my God. That's what would happen. I would tell them I was an accountant and somebody would ask me something about a number and I'd freeze. (laughs) But Um, just about the distraction piece that you were talking about, focusing, it is so real. That lack of focus or the momentary overwhelm when you're processing trauma, like going through cancer, that is so real. Yeah. I, and it surprises me because it's things that used to be so easy for me. And And again, I always emphasize, I'm so grateful because my cancer was caught early enough. Like everything, it's all going to be fine. And I'm still rocked this hard. And then I I do, I have had a therapist probably for two years before this started. And she was so lovely when I told her that it looked like I had cancer. And then I had to tell her I did. She actually cried. She's like, I didn't think you would. But in speaking to her, one of the things that I found helpful is I was talking about all the things I feel like I should do and I should be doing this or I should have done that. And I was telling her, I'm like, I'm finding that I can't really accomplish more than one or two things a day. And a bit of advice she gave me that I think is very helpful is she said, well, why not instead of saying should or have to think of one thing that you want to do or something that you need to do? And if you just think in terms of that, like I'm like, okay, I do need to return this email, not like I should because should makes it hang over and Breaking it down that simply has helped a little bit. But then yesterday when I was doing the thing, it still made me cry. But I'm 
I, I thought it was over. You know, I thought, I thought all of this, I thought it was done. And I also was like, am I considered a survivor yet? Like how, when does that kick in? I'm like, so now I'm just here and it's weird. It's so real. I can feel the tears and I, gosh, when you've gone through this and someone else is going through it, you relive it. You can tap into that moment so quickly and it's just so raw, Missy. It's so fresh. It really is. And the fact that you're able to express the pain that you're in and this limbo and this state of just trying to heal, but not knowing. I remember, it's going to sound so weird. I remember being diagnosed the second time and I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but I was so relieved to get, (laughs) it sounds so dark, but One, I knew that I had cancer. And two, I knew that I could beat it because I'd beaten it the first time. So in a weird way, I had gotten through the phase that you're in and then got to the invincible phase. And I know that seems a far way off for you right now, but you will get there. It is so new. You are just so new out of this gate. And there's so much uncertainty. There's a new normal. You actually did something that was really intense. And that was not only did you go back to work, which is a big feat while you're on cancer treatment, you went back onto a stage and performed as a headliner, which is a whole nother level of stress and vulnerability. Yeah. It's when I look at it, it does sound kind of <laughs> I'm like I really I really did. I don't think I knew what else to do and it was about a day or two into my diagnosis where I was sitting on the fence like am I going to talk about this as I'm going through it or am I going to keep it? And I'm not a very keep it person. I I feel like the human condition and the human experience is something we kind of owe to each other in a way. I tend I do it through humor. So it didn't make sense for me to keep it in. And one of the beautiful things about that, like I was telling you the people that will come up and pat me and be like, I'm 10 years out, my mom's 27 years out or whatever. How does that make you feel when people do that? I, it's like a special secret. It's like a secret handshake. It's like a secret handshake. And it's also, (laughs) it's also been adorable because one woman came up to me. She's like, oh, and by the way, you should talk about how important vitamin D is to people. (laughs) And I'm like, I I'll figure out a way to work that in, but it's that part's been adorable. Like people adding in insights. I actually was thinking about this moment where you had these lists and you felt really overwhelmed and it's such a real feeling that we all go through not only during cancer treatment, but after cancer treatment Can we look at that comedically right now and see if we can find the funny in it? Like how you would build that to put that on stage because it's so real for you. It's a pain point that everyone gets. It's a universal moment that we've all had. How would we attack that comedically? Well, I think one of the things that I, and I did this, And I imagine people will relate to it. When I started crying, what I did is I wrote down things that I already did just so I could scribble them out. And there there was something about like, 
returning a phone call. I had done it, but I wrote it down so that I could angrily cross it out. Like, ha ha, I did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I Like I was one upping myself, my own list. And the other thing I think. Wait, we, Missy, that's yeah. really funny. This yeah. comment that you had about writing down your things just so that you could defiantly cross them out. Yes. That's actually really funny. That could work into a bit. And that's just good advice. Right. I did that. And then the other thing is finding, you know, there would be times in my life where I would have big dramatic things to write down. It might be funny to talk about, okay, this weekend you're going to open for John Lovitz. This weekend you're going to headline in Oklahoma. Today you're going to cut your toenails or things like <laughs> that. Like, and I don't know. There's, I think there's a lot of different ways you can approach it comedically. I have to make an observation. Sure. Okay. So the minute I asked you to think comedically, your skin color became rosy. You got a total twinkle in your eye. You got completely animated. And for that short moment, you were transported into Missy, the comedian that doesn't have cancer, didn't have cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And it just literally like pulled you out. Now, yeah. I'm not saying it's couldn't go back or shouldn't go back. Yeah. But I'm just saying if if anyone listening could actually have seen the video transformation that she made when she went back to her comfort zone, which is thinking comedically, it was so incredibly visible and palpable. Yeah. It I, I feel it like it, it feels it like I feel like a watered plant the minute I can get into that. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's fine. My husband will say that sometimes, too. He'll say when he sees me kind of crashing a little, he's like, baby, you're going to feel so much better when you get on stage as soon as you. It's true. I think. And of course, I mean, comedy cures. It's what it's all about. Woohoo! That was a plug for the Comedy Cures Foundation. <laughs> Remember, like I was into Comedy Cures before I had cancer. Yeah, like, that, I, that's true. She is not a poser. She didn't just yeah. join the Comedy Cures bandwagon when she was diagnosed with cancer. Missy was doing shows years and years ago for us. And the audience loved her like you wouldn't believe because... If you haven't seen Missy perform, she's super animated, very honest. You can tell from this podcast episode and the prior episodes, Missy wears her heart on her sleeve and she is not afraid to be vulnerable and very frontal about her life and her emotions and, and what she's going through. And Missy, I just want to say the fact that you are so comfortable just sharing your deepest fears, your concerns, your humor with us. I feel this is sacred time with you. And I just am so honored that you do this. And I want you to promise that you'll come back. We have so much more to explore. Oh, absolutely. It's so therapeutic for me to get to share this with you. Again, I met you before this happened to me. I knew you as somebody who was beating cancer daily, right? I never I never was in that and now here I am and it feels sacred to me as well. And I hope that people who hear this understand that their stories are special. And when we hear stories, you hold them close to your heart forever. And it, it really, it really feels special to me too. So thank you. If you haven't checked out Missy's Facebook show, she goes live every Tuesday night with her husband and they have a date night and <laughs> People from all over the world check it out. They just plug in to see 
what their conversations are. He's a comedian also, and as beautifully real, the way Missy just bears her heart and soul and humor on Beating Cancer Daily is a taste of what she and her husband do together in their in their home when you get to check that out live. So if you haven't seen Missy live, check out her website, Missy Hall, and go to her social media. If you want her signature, just write to the Comedy Cures Foundation or record a message to us and we'll send you back all her contact information because this journey that she's on is really special and special because she's decided to share it all with us. And so, Missy, thank you. I can't wait till you come back again and just know that you are so cherished and so loved and that we are always here for you and that all of this fatigue and disorientation and emotions, it's all really normal. When something like that is happening and you have the reassurance that it's not something new and scary, it feels so much better. So thank you. We're in it. We're all in it with you and we're not going to let you fall. We're all here supporting you and that's what Beating Cancer Daily is about. Yeah. Every episode is just about helping you get through any stage of this journey or survivorship or as a caregiver even or a healthcare worker and just helping to improve the quality of your day. And sometimes that day needs to be one of rest and it needs to be one of release and healing. And Missy, your body is telling you, take good care of me. Yeah. I will try to listen to it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I love you and have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. If you've enjoyed this podcast, then I'd love to ask for you to go to comedycures.org and check out our membership circle levels you will find even more resources and more programming like our live virtual Q&A sessions with me, our live Comedy Cures events with our very talented comedians, live health builder workshops with Jackie Bryan hosted by me, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. It's really an exciting community. So please consider becoming a member giving it as a gift, telling your friends, telling your hospital support group all about this community. I can't think of a more empowering way to go through a cancer journey or your survivorship or your caregiving experience than with us at Beating Cancer Daily. It's truly an honor to serve you. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening. <laughs>